Well guys, <clears throat> that's the border to Thailand to Laos and I just left. Hey everybody, well, I've had an exciting couple days in Laos. Right behind me as you can see, that's the uh, Thai-Lao border. It's in the evening, I just crossed over back to Thailand. And let me give you an update. Um, I'd hoped that they would let my bike uh, through, but they wouldn't. And because it's not registered and doesn't have a tag in it, so I can't properly export it into any other country. So what I did is um, I left my bike on this side and would walk across the border every day. And I arranged with the pastors, the underground pastors that I work with to uh, meet and uh, we got a guest house and I housed every one of them. There were about 11 guys and uh, I fed them and we had a conference and so I'd get over here about 9, 10 o'clock and, uh, and I would teach straight through. We'd have a break at lunch and go eat lunch and have a good time fellowship. Come back and I'd teach again up until about 4 o'clock, 4.30 and then uh, I'd come back across the border. And I've done that for the last couple of days, and today's the last session for that, for those guys. When I got over here and I met the guys, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to stay over here permanently. And their advice to me was, come over um, with the tourist, act like you're a tourist, then slip away from them, and then come meet with us, and then come back again like you're a tourist. That way, I draw no attention to myself, and those guys are protected, and there's no problem there. So... Uh, Thanks everybody for praying. I've got more to share with you and I'll, I'll share it a little bit later. This is a little bit noisy and I see you guys sneak it up behind me. So we'll talk a little bit later. It has been a long day and I am hungry. And now I've got to go find some food. It's Saturday night. So I got the choice of street food. Or there's a place I saw that had spaghetti bolognese and I feel a little bit in the Italian mood. Well, I'm on my way, way back to my hotel, or guest house, and uh, I saw this place earlier in the daytime, and uh, they, they uh, have spaghetti for 99 baht. 99 baht is like $3. So, uh, I'm kind of in the mood for some pasta. Alright guys, this is my dinner for tonight spaghetti bolognese and I have to say it looks wonderful and I'll let you know how it tastes here in just a minute wow that's really good uh -huh. I'm pretty impressed <laughs> this is great spaghetti bolognese I'm glad I stopped here <laughs> oh wow Hey everybody, just got back from Laos, and uh, which is right in this area, right across from the Mekong River, and almost where I'm pointing, there was a guest house there that we rented for a lot of the underground pastors that I work with on that side, and uh, they were managed to catch some buses and <clears throat> come to Ho Chai, and we met up a few days ago and organized for them to stay at that guest house and and um, uh, we met and uh, I would stay on the Thai side to, so that nobody would get suspicious 
and uh, one of the reasons was my bike uh, as I mentioned earlier um, uh, didn't pass reg I mean wasn't registered and didn't have the new tag so they wouldn't allow me to export it uh, out of Thailand and into, into Laos but no problem God gave us a new solution a new plan these guys were able to get together and come down on a bus and uh, I we our ministry paid for them to stay in the guest house and uh, they stayed there and then we fed them and took care of them and I would arrive there 9 10 o'clock depending on how quickly I could get through the border and um, and I would teach from roughly about 10 o'clock to about 4 4 4 30 and then I'd head back to the border we'd break and have a lunch break and uh, it was an awesome and amazing time I have to tell you I was so blessed by this experience and uh, what God had done even though I was a bit disappointed that I the laws had changed I couldn't get my bike registered in time um, hopefully we'll find a way around that so future trips I can get back over there and spend more time there and there's a lot of guys that I needed to connect with I couldn't connect with but was able to plant Bible schools and a thumb drive to some of these guys that had access to that type of technology and who understood English and uh, I know they'll benefit from the study and the research and the preaching and teaching on that Bible school, Bible school. and I know they'll pass it on to others that they feel that will benefit from it as well I was so blessed the first day they began to share and tell me stories that happened after I'd left uh, four years ago and even on my first trip um, and I was incredibly encouraged and uplifted and blessed to, to hear those stories um, I preach and teach a message um, to all my leaders about how to create an, an atmosphere an environment for the miraculous to happen from 1st Corinthians 13 the last verse where Paul said abide faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love and I explained to them if they can create this atmosphere it's an atmosphere that people respond to God in, and it's an atmosphere the Spirit of God moves in. And the two connect, and anything can happen. Well, that message so impacted and changed them. They began to share with me the healings and the miracles and the testimonies and all the things that had happened, that every time they preach, they keep that in mind, that they want to create an atmosphere of faith, hope, and love, because that's how people respond. Matter of fact, faith simply is a response to God's love. It's, it's trust. So... I was blessed to hear that and then they reminded me of a message I preached and when I left them and I always tell this to all my leaders that no matter what happens to you no matter what you go through no matter what mistakes you make in your life no matter what uh, is thrown upon you or or you have to experience or tragedy it doesn't matter whatever you face in life you never want to ever ever forget that God loves you because if you don't forget that God's able to get you through all every situation even if it, even if you're responsible for the situation he'll restore you he'll recover you he'll deliver you he'll pick you up he'll get you through that well they begin to share with me how that message has so impacted and changed them because they've messed up and like all of us they've had struggles and difficulties and challenges and they remembered to never forget that God loved them and as a result the presence of God the grace of God and their faith in God just was there for them to handle those situations and go through it you know most of you don't realize that you know, in Laos, it's illegal to preach the gospel. There's tremendous persecution for those that preach the gospel. And uh, these guys, the stories they will, will tell me about what they've had to go through in their stand and faith in Jesus Christ will bring you to tears. And the final service was just the presence of God was so amazing and wonderful. And we all hugged and cried, and I told them I didn't know when I'd be able to see him again, but I'd do my best to get back. And uh, I also told them the reason I, I was there is there were people in America that loved and cared for him and financed and helped support me so that I could come and share with him the Word of God and, and help them grow in their faith and grow in their relationship with God and teach them the things that they, the Spirit of God wanted them to know so that they can continue on. The one, of, one of the things that really blessed me was that uh, they've planted more churches 
they're evangelizing. Uh, when I taught them on evangelism the last time I was here, they said all those lessons have helped them reach people. And so they're planning churches, spreading them out, and, uh, and that really blessed me. So had a great time. Like I said, a little bit disappointed I couldn't get my bike over there and spend two, three weeks just traveling and reconnecting with some of the guys that I didn't connect with this time. But hey, those things happen on the mission field. You do the best that you can. God makes another plan and you carry on. And this isn't the end of the trip. I, tomorrow morning, I pack the bike up again and I'm heading out. And in a couple of days, I meet a good friend of mine, a missionary, Scott Fletcher in Thailand, and who's helped organize another pastor's conference. We've got pastors from Burma and Laos and Thailand all coming together. And so we're going to have a wonderful time with them. And uh, it's been a fantastic trip so far and an amazing trip, even though the, the, I've had some obstacles and some challenges. Uh, it's amazing. So I'll, I'll keep you in, informed as I travel and uh, let you know what happens. But uh, thank you guys so much for holding me up in your prayers and lifting me up and encouraging me and sending me wonderful messages on Facebook. I can't tell you what that does to me and, and even my family when they see that. So God bless you guys and thank you so much and we'll talk soon.